What's up, everybody, and welcome to a brand new football podcast. Yes, I'm going to call it football here, even though we are stupid Americans that know nothing about the sport. That's what some people say, but we do. We care for the sport of football or soccer, whatever you guys call it. And welcome to the Avoiding Relegation podcast, basically a Premier League podcast. We will cover some other um, leagues around the world, but to keep this easy for us, we'll focus on the Premier League um, and maybe add some later down the road down the road if we really get in the hang of it i am joined today by my co-host of the avoiding relegation podcast and his amazing dog the star of the show <laughs> remington who she's has laid down she's she's camera shy uh christian hello christian i guess it's weird for me to say hello to you because like we've been talking all day but hello <laughs> yeah yes hello um I'm excited. This is fun. We, we tried this before. Uh, we didn't get very far because we tried recording every single day, but this will be more of a weekly slash maybe twice a week thing. So yeah, hopefully it'll work out better. Rare videos of like, we'll do some stuff where we're like reacting to the kits and giving our opinions. Um, and then maybe, obviously maybe we'll... some like big splash transfers. Ooh, that'll be fun. Like it, like an yeah. emergency podcast to like talk about a huge transfer. And we're going to be talking about some of the transfers in today's show. Um, first off, we are going to get to our early, early, early Premier League predictions. Now the season starts August 5th, I believe, maybe August 4th. I know there's a game on that Friday, but uh, so we're still a month, month and a half out but we're going to give our early Premier League predictions and then we'll come back later down the road when we're closer to the season and give our final Premier League predictions along with like Golden Boot winner and all of that. So I guess first things first is like to talk about what got us into the Prem. Well, I think we like kind of all did it at the same time, me, you, and all our friends. Oh, me, you, and Bailey, really. Uh, we had a lot of friends we were working with before that were following the sport. And we just kind of decided to give it a go, I guess. Yeah, it was. Well, we weren't even really following the sport at the time. Like I I played soccer when I was younger. So did you. And then we've always been like sports fans. You in particular, you got me into sports. And then we were just like one day we're like, let's check out. Let's check out football. Let's check out soccer. And um, I, th- I honestly think it was the World Cup that really got us into the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Wh- which World Cup? You're talking the one in Russia uh was it russia that was the last one it had to have been the last one that like really got us into it so yeah i started in mls and you were the first one that got into like european football uh and obviously everyone's gonna say it's so much better than mls i just respect mls because that is (laughs) our league this is like completely wrong though because you're the one wearing the uh, European jersey or kit yes. while I'm wearing the MLS. So <laughs> I'm not really the biggest MLS follower. Yeah, uh, not not anymore. We, we kind of started there and then we had some friends say, you got to check out European uh, football. So my first match that I ever watched of European football was the Champions League final between Real Madrid and Liverpool. Not the one this past year. I'm not that new, but the one back in I, whatever year it was, like 2017, 2018. Um, when Gareth Bale had an incredible goal and it was the Lorius Carius game where everyone <laughs> was just laughing at him. And I fell in love with Liverpool, like during that game, watching that game. And I've been a Liverpool supporter. You'll never walk alone uh, ever since. And that's, uh, I haven't wavered from that. And uh, Christian, uh, why don't you tell them about your team? Uh, I'm a Chelsea fan. Uh, I became a Chelsea fan when Christian Pulisic left Dortmund to go to Chelsea because I am a Christian Pulisic fanboy. <laughs> Captain America. He is our Captain America. And and we're going to have to do something for that later down the road, too. Something for our World Cup. Or now that the United States is actually yeah. in it. So. Oh, during the international break, you mean? Yes, yes. We're, we're definitely going to have to like cover the World Cup. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a background on us. We're two best friends. We've known each other since fourth grade and we wanted to talk uh, football with you guys. So I can't wait to see the comment sections of how many people say we know nothing about it. So I'm so excited. All right, let's get to the premier league, our early premier league predictions. Let's talk about where we kind of left off. 
uh, Manchester City champions again to to the sadness of my heart. Manchester City beats out Liverpool on the final day. I was watching the game. I really thought that Ashton Villa was going to do it, that Steven Gerrard was I, going to pull off a an incredible victory, that Philip Coutinho was going to help, and, and they just gave it away. Liverpool had I, the title, and they gave it away. I remember you being so excited when Villa took the lead, and I was just sitting there thinking, I'm like, this is just like, like we've seen this a thousand times. City gives up the goal. They're down. Randy getting too excited. And then City marching right back and scoring three on them like that. It was it was two. It was two nil. Two nil with like 20 minutes left in the game. That's just what Manchester City does. When you spend when you're spending a hundred million dollars a window, that's just what happens. It's freaking El Kai Gundigan. Like I can't stand El Kai oh, Gundigan. I can't stand him. Dorman legend, by the way. He's such a good player, but he he always does this. He always comes on and he just miraculously gets two or three goals when he has to have it. Um, in other news, Christian, Chelsea rounded out the season in third. Not what they were looking for, but they're still a step below. We're going to talk about them later when we're more elaborate on the teams and why we put them where we did, but not quite where Liverpool and City are at the moment. No, but... <laughs> I mean, when, when you're talking, I still think that was like what? That was Thomas Tuchel's first year, like first, you know, run as the manager. I would like to have seen them made more moves this window as they have to, that they have to this point. But I think he will be there to make moves and make them a better team this season. But we'll see. And then uh, we got to talk about the three teams that got relegated. So it was Nor was it Norwich? Yeah, Norwich, Burnley, and Watford going down. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to welcome three new teams to the Premier League this season: Fulham, Nottingham Forest, and Bournemouth. Well, new teams. We got we got Fulham <laughs> just an every other year team at this point. I was just thinking about that. Fulham's in the league now, but I'm like. Could they end up going right back down? And then here comes Norwich. I feel like it's just every other year we either have Norwich or Fulham. The yo-yo clubs. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Fulham yet. I think that they could make some moves and stay up this, this year. There's a couple. I'm between Fulham and Nottingham. We always have that one team that stays up. I'm between those two teams that, that are going to stay up this year. Well, let's, I don't know let- yet. Let's get to it. That kind of was our Premier League standings rundown. Uh, Just to show you, we know what we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So let's get. I don't need to prove it if you don't believe it. Whatever. (laughs) Yeah. Tune away. (laughs) Do what you want. Um, So let's get to our Premier League early predictions and where we think everyone's going to end up. So Christian, because I haven't shut my mouth and I've basically been talking this entire time, even over you, I need to. I need to let Christian shine. Let here. Me, I'm gonna let him. Let me go just first. say that these are extremely subject to change by the end of this window because I based a lot of my predictions off the t te- like the the teams right this second. Maybe a little bit heavy rumors, but if there's any slight rumors, I didn't take these in effect. So whatever this whatever the squad's looking like right this second is kind of what made me do my early predictions. So because we're gonna do a a more concrete prediction later right yes yep we're going to come back when everyone's made their moves or at least should have um, made their moves and in, in currently the i have one two three four five six te- uh, clubs landing in the same spot they landed at last year Ooh. so okay i do thank you for reminding i do have let me lower this here uh let me pull this up i do have the premier league table from last season so i'll be able to see this and see exactly where we are. All right. Awesome. So Christian, who are you having in dead last? Are we just going to go one by one or are we going to go by threes? I think one by one. Okay. And then we'll compare them that way. Yeah. Dead last. I have Bournemouth. Oh, okay. Why? Why the cherries? I, so a lot of people are saying, can Dominic Solanke prove it this year? And I don't – every time we see him in the prim, I feel he can't do it. I think goals are going to be a, tr- a struggle for them. 
Uh, and usually the the pr- newly promoted teams that can't score, Norwich, end <laughs> up being coming dead last. So I think I think Bournemouth's going to come last. Uh, funny, funny you say that. I've got nothing else to add. I thought about this. I want Bournemouth to stay up because they were in the prem when we first started watching. But I've I agree with you. Like we haven't like Christian and I have not compared these at all. We actually just filled them out before we got on to record this. But we're agreeing right off the bat. We just know each other too well. I've got Burnmouth in 20th. I don't think so far in this window they've made any moves that are going to make them uh, a competent Premier League club and someone that can actually compete to to get up possibly to mid-table. Uh, and and I agree with Dominique Solanke, a former Liverpool boy. He needs to prove it before I change uh, my predictions here because so far in the Prem, he hasn't proven that he can do what he did in the championship so I think Burnmouth, welcome back to the Prem, but you're going to go right back down. Um, next up, we've got 19. So I'll start off this time. I'll say it's it's time. I said the uh, cherries. Yeah, cherries for the last one. But it's time for the Saints to go back down to the championship. I don't. So, so you're on me with Southampton. I, I am now. You have you have convinced me, and I've watched a lot of. Um, videos about predictions and stuff and i, uh, I um I, i'll what? get to southampton later i think if they keep james ward prowse they could be a team that i think either way they're going to be right there james ward prowse could be enough to keep him up there but if he is on his way to arsenal i don't see them saying up. it well it's been a talking point for years and i believe ever since they got rid of danny ings they've kind of been lacking something. And I'm not saying Danny Ings is a Lord and savior and someone that's going to give you, you know, 30 goals a season, but I'm saying that's, that's a lot of goals that Southampton gave up when they let him go. And they haven't really fixed that since they, one of the lowest scoring teams in the league, they haven't been great. And past couple of seasons, they've been struggling to, you know, get back to their kind of mid table form that they were a few years back. So I think this is the year that the saints are finally going to go down at 19. I have a team that I think this could change. This is one of those teams that this window is going to change everything for for them. I have Nottingham forest at 19 right now, Mm, losing Jed Spence, losing Jed Spence is going to be huge. Uh, They have an issue at keeper right now. Uh, I know there's been the rumors of Dean Henderson, but I've also seen that those could be falling through. And that's a position that coming in was one of their more solid positions with Bryce Samba, who wants to now go back to France. I just think they are in shambles right now. And unless they fix this really quick in the next, in this next week, uh, ugh, this next week and a half, I don't see them staying in the prim as much as I want them to. You were big it's been, on what, not an M4. It's been, it's been 23 years since they've been in the prim. And they used to be one of the bigger clubs in the league. I think that if they do fill these positions properly, they could push for a top 10 finish. But because I'm a big, I'm a big Steve Cooper guy. I like him, but you got, there's, there's four or five positions they got to fill. Steve Cooper is a competent manager. Like he knows what he's doing and it's been a long time for Nottingham Forest, but that shocks me that you have them going down. Cause I remember when we were talking like two weeks ago or something about where we could see these, these clubs ending up, you're like, I don't see Nottingham Forest going right back down. They waited this long. And usually clubs that wait this long to get back in the prem, say like a, a Brentford, when they actually do get back to the prem, they, they stay there for at least a, a few seasons. I still don't see them going down. This is like I said. This is based on what their club is looking at at the moment, and I think that they'll make the right moves to stay up. But right this second, they don't have the team to do so. Well, right this second, I have Nottingham Forest at 17th. I'm sorry, excuse me, 18th. 18th going right back down. So that would make Nottingham Forest, Southampton, and Burnmouth the three teams that I have going down at the moment. Uh, I did their goalkeeper situation is one that you need to figure out. I love Ethan Horvath. I do for the United States men's national team, but not for Nottingham force in the, uh, in the premier league, they got to go out and they got to spend some money, man. If they were able to get Gareth Bale, would that be absolutely huge for them? You know, if he's they, if they get Bale, that would be big. I'm, I love Brennan Johnson. I think Brennan Johnson is currently the best player on the squad. 
another guy who probably won't be there much longer, but he's a homegrown and he's a stud and he's could play down the right wing or they, I think they've been playing him as a second striker next to Keenan Davis, which is another guy that they're more than likely not getting back. It's a striker. They got to fill. It's, it's just so tough coming up when you've been down for so many years, so many key players were on loan and it's just, it's going to be a tough road for them. So I think it'll, who, be, it'll be a fun season, but it'll be a long one. So who is your, your third and final team being relegated with Nottingham Forest and Burnmouth? Right now I have Fulham. Oh. I think, I, so I got all three of the new ones that are coming up, going down. Like I said, I this is going to this is going to completely change after, at the end of this window. I think Fulham currently right now is the more pol- polished squad of the three teams that are coming up. Pol- Fulham has a lot of the same players that they had when they were sent down. I think Mitrovic is that that's his name, right? Mitrovic, their striker. Yeah, I'm looking it up just to make sure. Yes, I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty really, sure yeah. as his name the Serbian. Yeah, he, Alexander Mitrovic. I think this is the year. I think he he makes that Premier League step this year. I think he had like he had so many goals last year. I can't remember the exact amount. Twenty something. I think that he will get enough to get them right at the line, but they still need another marquee player to get them above the line at this at this point. It's he set a record last year, if I remember correctly. It was like forty three goals in the championship. Was it that many? Yes. I think he's ready. He's, he's, I think he's 26. I think this is the year. And I think he's correct me. I, maybe it's, I thought I heard it's a record. I know the number was in the 40s. I'm not going to lie. I did not follow the championship last year as much as I should. <laughs> this year, I will definitely be following a lot more. But we continue, we continue to learn about the game. Like we still, we both want to watch the championship um, this next year because, you know, that's just going to help us with our knowledge of the players and the teams coming up and stuff. Cause like you said, we didn't really watch Burnmouth, Fulham or not in forest last year. Unless- yeah, I watched the, I watched the entire playoffs, <clears throat> uh, which is kind of what got me into wanting to watch championship. With so many <laughs> but most competitive league out there. So let's move to a six or 17th. At 17th. Why. Yeah. 17th. I'll start this one off right at the, right above that line is where I have the saints Southampton at this moment. Like I said, James Ward-Prowse is either staying or going to Arsenal at this point, from what I understand. If he goes to Arsenal, they fall below it. If he stays, they stay above it. Imagine being James Ward-Prowse. You have literally the Saints' future, possibly, in the palm of your hand. Go to Arsenal, and you're dooming them to relegation. And don't go to Arsenal, and you could save them. Theoretically, I know he's not thinking like that, but he, he could be thinking exactly like or, that. Or you could think, go to Arsenal and get the big payday. Yeah, well, <laughs> if you look at it money-wise, we all know what he's going to do. Um, for 16th, I don't – or 17th, I don't know why I keep jumping up one. 17th, I keep losing my spot. You're I very have, excited about the 16th position. I know. I've, I'm super excited for 16th. Uh, for 17th, I have – Fulham. I do think Fulham's going to do enough to survive this time. They need to get out of the yo-yo club um, kind of silhouette that they're they're filling right now. And I I'm nervous about Mitrovic because how many times have we seen him in the prim and they go right back down immediately? Like he just doesn't do as well as he does in the championship. I'm hoping this time it's different. Because I almost feel like if they go back down, we won't be seeing him again on Fulham. Um, They did lose a very important player. And sorry, you guys are going to figure this out. I'm probably the worst person at pronouncing names. But he went to my my club, Liverpool, uh, Calva Hall. Uh, So Calva Hall. Yes. Very important Uh, player for Fulham that they lost in the midfield. Here's the thing. When Fulham came up last year, they, I mean, they pretty much replaced their entire team. Don't do that. They replaced <laughs> their entire team. So it's kind of hard to have that team chemistry when you do so. And I think that really uh, hurt them was two years ago. I th- think they're going to be better this time around. Well, which would be, I think, uh, I mean, it can't get much worse. I think they were dead last. For them, they're going to be hoping to get better. 
Um, so I have them barely surviving in 17th for 16th place. I'll start us off this time. Cause I've been super excited about 16th place. Uh, I'm going to go with Brentford. So I think they're going to do a little worse this year. And this is something that we've seen in the past with teams that come up, get a solid finish. And then I feel like they kind of lag back down a little bit. And that's what I think is going to happen to Brentford. Uh, I don't see them doing as well as they did last year. There's been some rumors. Of course, there's rumors on every single player, but there's been some Ivan Tony rumors here and there. Who's going to be your scorer if he goes, even if he wasn't your main scorer, uh, he's still a solid one. And I just, looking at their roster, do not feel like Brentford can be much better uh, than what they were last year, and that's 13th. I actually do see them dropping here a little bit and falling back down to 16th and kind of being a, in that relegation battle, but I think they'll be able to, to fend it off enough to have a comfortable finish at the end of the season. I also have Brentford falling to 16th. Wow. Now, let's, let's, let's not get wrong. What they have done has been absolutely impressive. Basically getting rid of their youth Academy, buying youth players from other teams and getting up to the, to this level. Of, I mean, top level in all of football around the world has been very impressive. I don't see them finishing mid table this coming season. Like you said, I think they battle for relegation again, but they win it again. There, there's too many teams that I feel got better this year. And as of now, Brentford has not gotten better um, from, from what I'm, I'm seeing. They haven't really made any noticeable signings. So uh, obviously this can all change, but Christian, I feel, like we've, seen, I feel like we've oh, seen ahead. it like a thousand times teams that get promoted that hadn't been in the league for so long. They kind of have a, a very defensive style of play and it takes a little bit for the top teams to figure them out because it, maybe if they have played them, it was in a cup game. And then the next year, they kind of slip. Yeah, I agree. So so that is our second team. We've agreed on Christian. Who do you have right above them 15th place? At 15th, I have a team moving up a couple spots, and that's Leeds United. Okay. Uh. I believe, yeah, they were 17th last year, right? Um, let me double make sure here. Yeah, 17th, barely surviving yeah. relegation on the final day. They had they brought in a new manager about midway through last year, Jesse March, who is from United States. Obviously, he was doing stuff for the national team and then went over to Leipzig, didn't work out there. And now he's with Leeds and they survived on the final day of the season. A lot of rumors around Leeds, Christian. And you know what? We can talk about them at the same time because I also have Leeds at 15th place. <laughs> so so with, with Leeds, you got players like Rafinha who rumored to leave. Um, Calvin Phillips is being talked about Calvin by Phillips almost the other every one big club. Think of. Yep. I, I think those are two key players. And if they lose them, it will hurt them. Especially now that we're getting progressing through the window – the longer they wait to to move them, the harder it'll be to replace them. Well, let's talk about someone they, a few people they brought in, and I'm looking at them right here. Brendan Aronson, we know him pretty well. He's a young United States midfielder that has shown a lot of promise. And but then, is, is he Premier League ready <clears throat> at this moment? Someone who could be Premier League ready is a guy they just brought in for 12 million euros from the Bundesliga, from Bayern Munich, and that's Mark Rocha. So they've made some signings and that's why I have them moving up. Now I am concerned about Rafinha and Calvin Phillips. I think Calvin Phillips is for sure going to be gone. I don't know about Rafinha yet. And I don't think Jesse Marsh is that good of a manager. I saw it at Leipzig. They're my favorite Bundesliga team. And he's not that great of a manager, to be honest. I don't know if he can do a full season in the prem. So that concerns me. But the names that I just said, Mark Roca, Brendan Aronson, they also brought in uh, from Salzburg, Remus Christensen, excuse me. Um, so they've made some signings. They've gone out. Leeds have shown that they want to get back up to kind of the mid-table form that they were. Um, and, and that's why I think they move up a little bit, in my opinion. So let's move up. Christian, go ahead and start us 14th. At 14th, I have a team falling 
four spots from 10th, I have Wolverhampton. Ooh. Wolverhampton, the second half of the season last year, were not good. They were very bad. I, I think they had lost multiple games in their last 10. I just I think that that transitions into the next season, at least for the start of the season. I think Wolves drop. Uh, yeah, Wolves are going to finish 14th on my we're three in a row, Christian. This is <laughs> insane. Uh, they were literally the fourth worst team at the end of the season, the second half of the year. The only teams worse than them were the relic or the last 15 games or something, not the entire second half, but uh, the only teams worse than them were the teams that got relegated. There's something going on at Wolverhampton because remember, I, I think, when, if I remember right, I think they were dealing with a lot of injuries as well. Um, and, well, and then Ruben Neves is highly rumored to be going somewhere else as well. And if that happens, who oh, you better hope you bring someone in. Yeah, um, but it's just they're not the same team that they were when we started watching the print. When they were under well, Nuno Sanchez. Well, well, when we first started watching, I think they were newly promoted. Uh, a very similar thing as Sheffield, uh, United, and Brentford to the same. A team that comes up, has a really good season. I think they finished top 10 in that first season of their promotion. And they've done very well. And they're still at 14, a middle table team. But they got to get it not... going in the right direction, is I think what we, we're both kind of saying here. They got to figure it out over there in Wolverhampton. Yeah. Because, like you said, when they, got, when they got promoted, they were – remember, they were pushing top six. We're like, is Wolverhampton yeah. Wanderers going to be the newest top six team? And they have just fallen off so much. So I agree with you. Let's see if we can make it four in a row. At 13th, they are the most mid-table team to me. I have Crystal Palace. Um, so Crystal Palace now under P Patrick Vieira, which I also don't think is a good manager. I didn't like Roy Hodgson. I always say his name wrong, but you you know who I'm saying. And I never liked Patrick Vieira. Um, and their team to me is still a very Crystal Crystal Palace team, to tell you the truth. Uh, so last season they finished in 12th. I have them moving back one spot here. They haven't really brought anyone in, uh, that has really intrigued me. And they actually lost, um, their second best player last year. Um, I got to remember his name here. Gallagher. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Couldn't remember it. They lost Gallagher, which is going to hurt them a little bit. And they really haven't based off what I'm saying here, haven't really brought anyone in. Uh, that's going to help that team out. So I've got Crystal Palace in 13th place. Uh, so is is it official that Cam Gallagher, or oh, I think it's Cam, uh, Gallagher is not coming back from Chelsea? Uh, it's not official. Because I, yeah, I, I know that Vieira wanted him back. See, I disagree with you with Vieira. I think Vieira did very well last year. Uh, I think if, if Crystal Palace does anything, I think they move up. Okay, so you 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 don't have them. We're gonna disagree this time. You don't have them at thirteenth. No, at thirteenth, I have a team that is moving up from sixteenth, and that's Everton. I think Everton is has now became that mid that mid table team as well. Again, some rumors around some of their players. I I you probably have Everton moving up a little bit higher, which is just, surprising. Just a little bit. bit. <laughs> just a little. But bit. yeah. But yeah, I, I don't see Everton getting any higher than 13th, but I think that's a good spot for them. Who do you have coming in at, at number 12? At 12, I do have Palace. The Palace okay. is going to finish 12th, just like they did last year. And I like I said, I do believe that if they do anything, they're going up. I've seen a lot of people thinking they could battle for a Europa League spot. We uh, just, we just flip-flopped. You think Palace could compete for a Europa League spot? I think Palace, I, I really do think Vieira has, is going to turn this club around. They have a lot of solid young players. I think that the, the, it, they're on the up. They're not. They're definitely not on the fall. Uh, I have Everton on the up here, finishing in 12th from 16th last season. They're going to figure things out. 
I do think they're going to lose one or two players, but I don't expect them to be back down struggling again. I think they're going to bring some, some pieces in to help them just start moving up the table. They're not going to make a dramatic jump, but I think 12th right around that 11 through 13th area is where Everton's going to end up. And when we do our like official predictions uh, shortly before the season, a lot of, 10 through 15, I feel like is going to be moved around and stuff like that, Uh, especially this mid table spot. So for my number 11th team or my 11th place team, I have them moving down two spots, but I still like what uh, Porter's doing with them. And that is Brighton and Hove Albion. I think the Seagulls, I, I like what they've got going on over there. Um, they haven't really made any moves that are, whether it's, well, they've made one, excuse me. I did looking at the moves. I did forget one. And that was Basuma, who is a great player for them. And there's, there's some more rumors about people who could be leaving. Uh, Mark, uh, Cucurella is the big one and Manchester city is looking to see if they can sign him, which would make them even, even better. And Manchester City definitely doesn't need to be any better. But <laughs> Brighton and Hove Albion, I think they're going to be the team that comes in around 11th and 12th. And I have them in 12th place or 11th, excuse me. In 11th position, I also have Brighton and Hove Albion. Hey, we're back uh, in agreement. <laughs> I have them fallen as from 9th as well. Like you said, Basumu is a big loss. Uh, Cucurelli could be a big loss. And I, th- I, if they lose both of them without replacing them, could be very bad. I'm a big Tyreek Lamptey fan. I think his speed down the right defensive side and former Chelsea boy is very important to them. But like like we said, Brighton always finds a way to finish right around here. So I just think it's a good spot for them, just like you said. All right, top 10, Christian. Get us started. Your 10th place team. At 10th position, I have Leicester City, the Fox. Wow. The Foxes, you, you have them higher? Yeah, they're much <laughs> well, higher. I Here's the thing. There's, this is where the talent starts making that jump forward. You know, We've had all these teams that are, are very similar in talent, a lot of rumors of players leaving, and this is where we make that jump. This is where the teams are bringing in the players. I think Leicester hasn't done enough compared to these other teams above them, and that's why I have them at, at 10th. I am shocked. I am literally shocked you have Leicester in 10th. I have Newcastle United in 10th. This is going to be a project. They're now the most expensive club pretty much in the world. They They're the richest club in the world, yep. Most expensive owners coming in. I think we're going to start seeing more and more transfers. Christian, you've said in the past how this isn't going to be a one-season thing because they have to prove that you know to the top players that they're winners before they sign like some top players say like a Neymar or in an, an eventual Mbappe or something like that. But I think they're, they're going to slowly start moving up. They were 11th last year. Maybe I'm being a little harsh, putting them just 10th, but uh, you know, they have brought in uh, targets or yeah, Matt target from Ashton Villa, who I think he's going to help them out. I think that's the type of moves that Newcastle are going to make this offseason, bring in a bunch of pretty good players to get a more full squad other than one big, he's a top five player in the world type player. Um, so I think that's going to be Newcastle's way to slowly go up the table, but I still think the teams above them are going to be better than them in the end. So I think Newcastle finishes 10th right at mid table. I still laugh when, when I hear like people were talking about how, Oh, the, the Newcastle takeover and immediately people are like, Oh, Mbappe. Like, <laughs> yeah. Mbappe doesn't want to play for Newcastle right now. Newcastle is going to have to get into European football on their own with their young players. With, like They're going to have to bring in some players like the Jesse Lingards, like those, these, these upper scale players that aren't quite world-class. And they're going to have to groom into that in order to get the Mbappe is. They may have the money to do it, but they're not playing at the level to do that. Well said. They have to prove that they are that club now. They are a club that's going to bring you European football uh, when talking about the Champions League and Europa League. Um, Let me start us off in ninth. I've got West Ham. West Ham is the new Wolverhampton Wanderers. Uh, A few years ago, I was like, 
West Ham's pretty good. Are they going to jump Everton and be the new top six club or whatever? And ever since then, it's kind of slowly been dropping ever so slightly. They finished seventh last year. Um, so correct me, that's just outside of European football. Or is that the last spot? No, seventh is the conference league. The conference league. So they just missed out on Europa League. And I just think they're going to drop a little bit more this year. I don't think they're a bad team, but they're not going to be a team competing for Europa League because the ones that I talk about in a minute are just going to pass them and they're going to be better than them this year. This was tough for me. Currently at nine, I have Ashton Villa. They made a big signing that I think is going to be actually one of the most underrated signings in the league in Bubakar Kamara. And they had already made all those signings last season that we thought was going to make the jump. This is my thing with Villa. As much as I want to put them in the seventh and eighth position, every time I think about doing it, they don't they don't finish where I think they're going to. So this year I'm going to push them back a little bit on my ex- expectations and maybe I'll get it right. But I think Bubakar Kamara is going to be absolutely massive. I think he's going to be the most underrated signing going in the season. Who do you have at number eight? At eight is where I have Newcastle. I think that they have the money to bring in pieces to get them up there to compete for European football, but they're not quite going to be there yet. Ashton Villa finished 14th last season, and I have them just one spot above you, Christian. I have them in eighth spot. I think Steven Gerrard is going to fully take helm at Ashton Villa. I think he has proven that he can manage a, a football team, and I think he's going to get them moving in the right direction. Philip Coutinho is now on full-time, and he is still a world-class footballer. I think he's going to do well. You talked about uh, Kamara. I think he's a great signing, and from what I'm hearing from all these rumors, Ashton Villa is nowhere near being done. I always pick a team that is that I put higher than what they end up being. Usually it was Leeds. Ashton Villa might be that team that I put up way too high. Or it might be a team I talk about here in just a couple of spots. But I think Ashton Villa is going to turn it around, and they're going to make a huge jump this year, and they're going to shock a lot of people. I really hope so because, like I said, Villa is always lets me down. All my predictions <laughs> Villa always lets me down, so I pushed them down. But we'll see. So at seven in the conference league. Yet again, I have West Ham going right back to the conference league. I think West Ham's still a good team. They still have your Antonio. Uh, we'll see what they do. I think that they're rumored to get Lingard, right? Yes, they're yes. one of the teams rumored. To get uh, they're also rumored to get Asmilia Sar, who I think would be a big sign for them. Which I think, if I'm sorry, I'm not playing in the Champions League or in the Championship again. <laughs> I. I think West Ham's still there. I I don't see them slipping. And number seventh, I put in the conference league. And you should be grateful that I put you seventh is Manchester United. Really? This team is the biggest joke in the professional sports world. I'm talking every like top football league i'm talking american football i'm talking the nba i'm talking the mlb i'm talking auto sports i'm talking tennis i'm talking golf i'm talking swimming i'm talking underwater fishing if that's even a thing i don't know underwater fishing underwater spear fishing or something like that manchester united is the biggest joke of a team a club you were supposed to be the richest, you know, club in the world, the most prestigious English club in the Premier League, and you can't figure this stuff out. You have the worst owner. I don't I could run a football team better than Woodard could or whatever his name is. Better than no, I I definitely agree on they've made some silly mistakes. I think that's low for United. I think they do equal to if not better than what they did last season. What what uh, what have I they actually, done? Oh, go ahead. Let's just I'll just go ahead and say I actually have them in six, one spot ahead. Uh, 
but I are I almost put them fifth. They have. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I they're gonna get someone. They're gonna get someone. Whether it be Anthony, which I'm not huge on either. They but lost. they're gonna get someone that's gonna. That's, I think Sancho might take a step forward this year. They've lost Ma- the Monde, uh Sorry, I can't say names. You know it. They've lost Matic. They've lost. Um, going through here, Edison Cavani. They've lost Lingard. They've lost Pogba. Yes, these are all players who were part of the issue. Yes, they need to tear it down. Yes, this is the right move. But when you do that, you have to bring someone in. And Manchester United's problem is they still believe, and Christian and I both feel like this, they still believe they are a prestigious club and they can get players to join them just because of their name. But there's been several players. They reached out, they reached out to Christian Eriksen, and Eriksen went, nope, I'm not interested. This is a guy who's lucky to be on the field at all and has no interest to go to United. They were trying to get Darwin Nunez. They, I found this out this morning. They flubbed that. They totally, there was something about food poisoning and then a meeting got pushed back. So they didn't even meet with Nunez. And then Nunez <laughs> didn't have, yeah, I didn't I did read the article. I got this notification this morning. It was food poisoning, a missed meeting, and what led to United not even having a chance at Nunez. And Nunez had no interest in Manchester United to begin with. It was between Klopp and Ten Hog, which, Christian, you aren't even that big on. Manchester United uh, is a club in shambles, and I almost put them, before, you, before I start stop ranting here, I almost put them as low as 10th. Oh, I think, wow. I, I think here's my club thing. Drop. You're, you're saying a lot of the same things I heard when Frank Lampard took over Chelsea and they had the transfer embargo on them. And Chelsea still finished top four because they're a big club. And while United is not getting the big club feel and bringing in the transfers, they're still a big club at the end of the day. Ten Hag was an outstanding manager at Ajax. We'll see <laughs> what he can do. At, at the Premier League level, I just think I couldn't put them any lower than six because they're Manchester United. Well, in sixth place, I have Leicester City. I think the Foxes turn it around this year. Last year had kind of a lackluster year in, in their standards, finishing eighth. I think they could turn it around. They're going to have to bring in a few pieces. Don't get me wrong. They're going to have to bring someone in. Um, I should have had them pulled up here because I've been making sure I don't miss any of the transfers that people have done. They haven't really done anything, to be honest with you. They need to bring some some players in. James Madison could go somewhere else this this um, transfer window, which would be a big loss for them. Yuri Telemans could go somewhere else. So if we come back in like six weeks' time to do our official predictions and Telemans gone and Madison's gone – I'm probably going to bring them down, but if they could somehow, or if they get rid of them and bring some players in to replace them, I think Leicester could get right back to where they were competing for Europa, uh, Europa League. Well, obviously you feel different than me with me having them at 10th, <laughs> but <laughs> I definitely and have was... them. They might be my overhyped team. That was six, right? Yes. All right. I believe you're starting out fifth this time. Uh, and your your six is Manchester United, right? Yeah. Okay, so fifth, I like them. They're young. I think their manager has a lot of potential, but they still need some players to come in. They still need some time, and that's Arsenal. I like the direction Arsenal is going, but I think we agree with every other Premier League fan. There's different tiers to the Premier League table. You have the top four. And then you have Arsenal and United, most people would say. And then you have, you know, everyone else. And, and I think Arsenal is just outside of really competing with that top four. They haven't really made any incredible moves. Lacazette is gone, finally. Um, but they've got a young club, and I think Arteta does have a lot of potential. And he, he got him going in the right direction. If not for a flunder by the team, they would be in the Champions League this year. So I think Arsenal, I feel very confident they are fit. At fifth, I also have Arsenal. I think that they're, they're rumored to get Gabriel Jesus. Uh, there's James Ward-Prowse in the in the uh, rumor mill. Uh, 
they like you said, they have a very young team with high potential. Big Aaron Ramsey guy. I think that's a good spot for him. You everything you said, I ditto. And Matt Turner needs to start in goal. Obviously, I'm biased. No. <laughs> well, that, that would take away from Ramsdale, which yeah. I think I said Ramsey, but I meant Ramsdale. Yeah. Ramsdale is is that dude. <laughs> Uh, at four, I have a surprising fallback at Chelsea. I right we second. can we can talk about this the exact same time because I have Chelsea also at four, and, and that's just for the second. It a transfer of Raheem Sterling changes it, but right now Chelsea has yet to do anything, and there's a team that moves up above them that have done a lot. So. Uh, yeah, Chelsea haven't haven't done anything. There's a lot more rumors about players leaving than players coming in. I mean, there's a lot of traffic both ways in terms of the rumored mill, but exactly what you said, Christian, as of this very second, Chelsea hasn't done anything to improve, and they weren't fantastic last year compared to the other teams around them. They didn't have the best finish to the season. I think they kind of heated up. No, I... I actually thought they ended the season kind of poor. I can't look back at, on it at th- this second, but I agree with everything you say said there. You said my country c- came out there. Everything you said. <laughs> uh, third place, I think we're going to agree here, Christian, so we can talk about it at the same time. I, I haven't seen his list, but I assume it would be Tottenham in third place. It is Tottenham in third. Yeah, uh, yeah, I thought so. Talk about a team that's done a lot of moves and is looking good. I'm, which is like not. It's very out of their character too. But like, Suma's going to be huge for them. Tottenham's a team that that likes to stand pat and not spend a lot of money, and they have done the complete opposite this window. Well, let's talk about this. They got a. Uh, another goalkeeper, backup goalkeeper, and Frazier Foster from Southampton. They got Basuma, who I think is going to be big for them. They sold Cameron Carter Vickers to Celtic, got some more money. Ivan Perisic is going to be the big talking point here. They brought him in. They've also been rumored to people like Jesus, Paulo de Bobble, de Bobble, de Bobble, Paulo de Bobble. Um, and there's so many more I could keep going on. Uh, Jed Spence, made, I think, is another one. Yeah, Richarlson is another one. They have just been rumored to everybody. And let's talk about their manager, Conte, because he is a very good manager in my mind. And that's why that's pretty much the reason I have them third is I'm like, he is going to take reins at Tottenham and having a full season. I think they're going to be right behind City and Liverpool. And I hate Spurs, but I also can't tell you the last time they beat Chelsea head v head. So, ooh, ooh, talking, talking <laughs> shit here to the audience. Let's get to our top two. Let's change it up. On the count of three, say your champion. All right, the champion. Yeah, I'm gonna do one, two, three. I, I think that it, we might as well just say at the same time because I think it's gonna be the same team. That's what I'm gonna one, <laughs> one, two, three, and then say your champion. One, two. Three Liverpool City, get oh! out of here. <laughs> okay, here. see, that's why I wanted us to say it at the same time because I knew you were going to say City, and everybody is saying Manchester City. I don't see them winning again. I don't think Holland is going to do as great I, as everybody I thinks. We had and this I'm, exact same conversation last year, and I'm a I'm a little biased. Yes, but I think Liverpool, Nunez is going to surprise a lot of people. Everybody is so worried about the midfield of Liverpool. They need to bring in a midfielder. They need to bring in a midfielder. They've got Jordan Henderson, who is still a really good captain for us. They've got Fabinho. They've got Thiago. That's all you need. When one of them needs to come out, you got Nabi Keita, and then we'll just go on from there and hopefully find a, a second backup. But other than Sounds that, like you need <laughs> another one. <laughs> no, no, but it's fine. We got our main starters. They just got to stay healthy, and I'm not. That's the, where Keita the comes fact in. That, the fact that you think Erling Holland is not an absolutely massive upgrade is just baffling to me. Erling Holland is a top five striker in the world right now, and you just throw him into the Manchester City team. We haven't seen it's, him. It's on ridiculous. Manchester. We've seen this before where top players come over and they can struggle at least take a season. Okay, but you keep saying Timo Werner. Erling Holland is not Timo Werner. I agree, Erling. but you don't know. We can't just say this guy killed it in, in the Bundesliga and he's going to come 
come out and possibly be the golden boot winner. Okay. Well, here's the issue with that is they were the they were the champions without him. I'm sorry. Did Dortmund even win the Bundesliga? I'm not talking if about Erling, Dortmund. We're, we're talking Holland, about Manchester City. I know, but if Erling Holland is that good, is that guy, then he shouldn't have had any problem taking Dortmund to a championship in the Bundesliga. Well, he also wasn't playing with Kevin De Bruyne. Yes, De Bruyne is insane. We all know that. But I'm just saying everybody yeah, get, is, that's who he's gonna be setting up for goals. Erling Holland. Everybody it's gonna, it, be, it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, I may I remind you that Liverpool only lost to City because Ashton Villa gave away three goals in ten minutes. That's how close City was to losing last year. I think everybody is but did right. they? I think everyone is too busy writing off Liverpool. Look, City, they're not, they're you, not you, want, you want to you want to talk about the fact that oh, we don't know if Erling Holland is the acquisition they need. But let's talk about the fact that Liverpool is no longer has Sadio Mane on the club. They didn't replace Sadio Mane with a top flight player. Literally the jersey I'm wearing right now, Sadio Mane. Uh, I mean, yes, you've got a point. Nunez is going to have to prove it just like Holland we had this debate about who's going to have more goals this year. So let us know in the comments down below on our YouTube page uh, who's going to end up being the better player, who's going to end up scoring more goals because they had very similar stats last season, Nunez and Holland, which we yeah. disagree with. <laughs> I think early Holland is, is definitely the better piece. But Well, there you go. There are our Premier League early predictions. We'll come back. And, and review it and change it up shortly before the season. And thank you guys so much for tuning into our first video. So my champion was Liverpool. Christians was City. The three teams I have going down, Nottingham Forest, Southampton, and Burnmouth. And Christian, you had the three rel or newly promoted teams, correct? Fulham, Nottingham, and Bournemouth until they can prove me otherwise. Uh there you have it. Let us know in the comments down below what you guys think. Make sure to hit that like button. Help us grow this. We're new. We're new streamers. We're new to the Premier League discussion game gang. If I can say my words right. <laughs> we're new to the discussion gang. So go ahead and hit that like button to help us grow. Hit that subscribe button if you guys would like more content. And then make sure to check this out wherever you guys listen to podcasts at Reality Randy. So this is part of our Reality Randy uh, podcast group. So make sure to type that in when you're searching for our podcast. So Christian, anything else to say? It's going to be a fun Premier League season. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I think there's a lot of new fun players to see in the top league in the world. So I'm excited. All right. Thank you guys so much. And we'll catch you next time. Yeah, later.